Ladies and gentlemen, in this video, you're going to witness one of the most spectacular combinations that I've ever seen in a Grandmaster game. Combos in sports are always very exciting. Pass, pass, shot at the goal, or like in boxing or mixed martial arts, a couple of punches, uh, throw the uppercut, you know, the knockout. But in chess, it rarely happens. And in this video, not only does it happen, it's also quite violent and it will be a spectacular sight for you to see. Also, today is Thanksgiving in the United States. So as always, I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for supporting all of my different pieces of content and being a fan for whether it's a day, whether it's today that you discovered this channel, or it's been a couple of years at this point. Also, Thanksgiving and Black Friday, there is a trend now to shop. So all of my courses on my website, Chessly, are 40% off. You can click the link in the description. It's from now until a couple of days from now, all right? And we instituted a seven day money back guarantee. So we didn't have that before, we uh, instituted that. So you get a free sample of any course you want on Chess League. We offer free samples and now we offer a seven day money back guarantee. So go check it out. But before you do go check it out, I wanna show you this game because I am, as much as I like making, making content of goofy chess, I am also thankful for the incredible chess displayed at the highest level of the game. All right, let's begin. Jan Krzysztof Duda, Polish superstar versus Anish Giri. This game begins with just a very, very standard Queen's Gambit decline transposition. Duda elects not to play a Catalan, which he does like to play. He plays knight to c3, and now black has a wide range of options, such as the traditional Queen's Gambit decline, the a6 Queen's Gambit decline, the knight bd7 Queen's Gambit declined, the semi tarash Queen's Gambit declined, but there's other things. The Vienna Queen's Gambit declined. That's called the Vienna. This is the Ragozin. Ragozin. Very interesting line. Bit more aggressive. Pins the knight to the king. Duda clarifies the pawns in the center so they no longer have any tension and develops his bishop out to g5. And we have knight b d7. This does block the light scored bishop, but that bishop is going to be developed in the future. Not to worry. And this is one of the more provocative approaches as black has delayed the very natural move castling. White plays the move rook c1, finishing development of the queen side, and ready to play e3 and bishop d3. And uh, Anish does not wait here. He plays h6, and of course, like any normal human being here, maybe regroups uh, and re reinforces the queen side, maybe castle. No, Anish plays g5. Okay, so he's breaking all the principles of chess that you know, that I know, that you can learn at Chessly, 40% off, Black Friday sale. Um, anyway... Bishop to g3, what is he breaking? He's not castling, right? He's keeping the king in the center. He's really overextending. And knight to e4, that's now multiple moves made with the same piece and the sabotages of his own development. But the position still remains in the balance. That's because chess is a very complicated game. And as you get to the highest level of it, you know that rules are meant to be broken, okay? It's kind of like, you know, when the light is red, uh, you don't walk across because a car might hit you. As you get older, you realize... Well, if there's no cars, you know, maybe I can safely walk across for legal reasons. If you do that and you get hit, uh, please note that uh, I was not saying that you should jaywalk. Uh, queen to b3, all right, attacks the bishop on b4 and attacks the pawn on d5. And black now responds by capturing and playing the move knight b6. So that is now four moves out of the first 11 made by the knights. And the bishop made a couple of moves and the bishop is gone. Yet black is still fine. Why is black fine? Well, black is fine because white still needs a few more moves to develop. And in that time, black is going to utilize the pressure on the white position and play even more aggressive moves with h5. What is Geary doing? Like, this is, this is crazy. The point here is that if white were to play the move h3, anticipating h4, bishop h2, the knight would now split the pawns. Okay, and just like in bowling, split pawns are bad. Only in bowling, they're bad if you're throwing the ball and uh, or rolling the ball. And when you're trying to get to the split pawns in chess, it's really not that bad of a thing. It's, uh, it's really nice. They're totally split, isolated, uh, and uh, white would have to defend them with the king, which is just not something that you want to do. So seeing this h5 come in, uh, Duda plays the move, <coughs> excuse me, c4. In chess, there is this basic principle, which is, if you're being attacked on the flank, right, like Duda is here with h5 and all this stuff, sometimes the best thing to do is to strike back in the center. Because what that does is it stretches the defenses thin, all right? You're not able, uh, as a chess player, to defend the entire board. Your pieces can't handle the center, the queen side, the king side. So c4 has been played by Duda, and then each continues with the plan h4, all right? That bishop is a goner. It's dead, all right? You're not going to save it. What do you mean? There's bishop e5, which attacks the rook. No, the bishop is trapped. 
completely trapped. Why is white better then? Or why is white not worse? Why is still 0.6? Like, what is Stockfish talking about? Well, it's still better for white because in chess, what are the two most important criteria? No, you tell me. No, that's like, I know you think that's the way the YouTube video works. You just sit there and I just blah, blah, blah information, maybe in your brain, maybe not. Maybe you're watching this while coding or running or in the gym or in the shower. You know, like sometimes I listen to sports talk shows. I just put it on a little ledge in the shower. I wash my hair, you know. I'm a chess player. I shower like once every week. But, you know, still, I, I, that's how I watch my videos. Uh, for legal reasons, I shower more than once a week. I don't know why that's for legal reasons. Um, in chess, the two most important things are material and king safety, okay? And in this position, despite about to lose material, Duda has something that Anish does not have, which is a very safe king. Look at Anish's king. <laughs> like, this position looks super stupid. If you just put this position on the board, like, just, I had no clue who the players were. I'd say it was two 700s. Neither has castled. It's like, move 15, black and lost, to, uh, white lost a piece. You know what I mean? Um, so this should be five check. Now, black could block here. And for the life of me, I do not understand what Anish didn't like about that move. Um, he chooses to play king to f8. So he voluntarily moves the king. Now, I'm assuming he just thought the bishop was going to be useless here. King would find some shelter over here, covered up by the queen and the other pieces. Makes sense. Uh, knight takes e5 to try to go knight to g6. And now, rather than allowing knight g6, Anish does, in fact, play king to g7. I mean, I gotta tell you, the king does look safe, all right? The queen is not just gonna trampoline over its own pawn. It can't just, like, it can't teleport. If it could, it would be mate in two. And if you play d6, that move looks really brilliant. I mean, it looks like you, you know, are a really smart player. But in chess, just because two of the three ideas work, okay, and one of them doesn't, like, if you have an idea, right, Two of the three opponent responses, you win. One of the three responses, you lose. That doesn't mean that you play the move. If your odds are two-thirds, one-third in other walks of life, you take that risk sometimes. I mean, maybe it's not for a, a monetary thing, but in some cases, two-thirds is better than one-third, not in chess. If, there, if you see that your opponent has a move that stops a threat, you don't play it. I don't, it's not a chance thing. Like, oh, maybe they won't see it. No, if you see it, they're probably going to see it. Okay. And at this level, they definitely will. So that's the way chess works. If you see a response that stops your idea, you can't just, well, maybe they won't see it. That's not how you play chess. So Duda plays bishop back to d3. And the knight goes back to d6. And we've been talking throughout, right? Material king safety. Duda's only down one point, one point of material. He has two pawns for the knight that he lost. Anisha's king is still butt naked. Like, I mean that in the, I mean, like, this king has nothing, no clothes at all. Someone's got to get him a robe, maybe some undies. Like, I don't know. It's Thanksgiving, Black Friday sale, get him some undies, not at Chesley, some other website. Um, I don't know. It's a very strange position. And now we have castles. So the thing is, Duda still can cast. Like, look at the difference. Okay. This king just bought a new construction. Okay. Built on the land. All right. Beautiful appliances, beautiful heating. I don't know what happened to this king. This king threw a party and burned down his own house. I, I, don't, I don't know what happened. Like, the king's just got nothing going on there. Now, what is going to be white's next move? All right? What is white's next move in this position? Like, you have a king here. You have a rook. What are you going to do? I'm going to go attack the king, right? The queen right now can't really attack the king. Here's one idea. Bishop back to b1. Do you understand the point here? The point of bishop back to b1 is that, like, let's say here, I want to put my queen in front of my bishop. It's called a battery, and I want to go to g6. Oh, I'm so brilliant. Look at me. I'm so smart. Yeah, what happens when black just meets you there? Because this knight anchors the bishop, which hits the queen, right? And the more pieces that black trades off, like, probably the better it's going to be. So how is Duda going to get pieces involved here without very obviously trying to maneuver them toward a niche? F4. Sometimes that's all you need. You just need a pawn. F5, F6, also E4. When the knight moves, E5. It's an avalanche. Okay, it's just like, I don't know how Anish is going to stop this. When you fight against pawns, pawns separate are bad. Not in the end game. Separate pawns are actually very good in the end game because they can go up and distract pieces. But in middle games, a cluster of pawns is brutal, okay? You are not going to beat four pawns. It's like, you know, have you ever heard someone say, would you rather fight like one horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses? Some stupid stuff like that? I don't know. Maybe the one-on-one -on -one situation won't even be that bad. 
all right? <laughs> like one of the questions I get asked, like sometimes my Twitch, my Twitch chat while I'm streaming is like, how many, how many uh, 10 year olds could you beat up at the same time? For legal reasons, I don't actually hit t uh, 10 year olds. Um, a lot of legal reasons in this video. Um, it's like, you know, what if there was 10 of them? Well, what if there was 20 of them? It's kind of the same situation here. Like what if there's four pawns and they're all running toward you? If there's one, if there's two, if there's three, you know what I'm saying? But what if there's like four or five, six, seven, like it's too much. Um, anyway, Twitch chat, stupid, YouTube my favorite, ne don't tell them I said that though. Rook f8 and e4. I mean, dude is just going for it, all right? Guys just coming to scrap, it's plus three now, the advantage is building, all right? Anish in this position plays the move, g3. And uh, you don't have to respond. A lot of you do this, a lot of you go, oh, pawn, <laughs> stupid guy, thought I was just gonna let the pawn in. Yeah, and then all of a sudden you lose, like you just get mated or something. Okay, folks, it's not, like, chess is not a game where you have to respond to a move if you see it. Like, you just gotta think, what is my opponent gonna do, right? He's gonna take, oh God, oh, he's gonna take. Okay, and what happens if he does? I don't, I mean, you could take, there's also a concept in chess called umbrella pawn. Sometimes it's better to just do this. Leave the pawns where they are. Leave the king as far away from the action as possible. You don't want a knight to end up somewhere here, a queen. Just leave the pawn. This is, you're, you're using the enemy as a shield, okay? So you don't see Duda doing that. He does this, seals the bishop, gets rid of the knight, and gets a new line of attack like this, and f6 is still an idea. Anish plays the move queen g5. Anish's king, by the way, still looks safe. Like, if I turn Stockfish off, see how different it is to watch the game with and without Stockfish? Look what happens if I turn this off. You have no idea who's better here. Like, you think you know? Mm, I'm not so sure about that. Plus five makes you be like, <laughs> well, hmm, hmm, dude is winning, yes. What a terrible game played by Mr. Geary. I don't know why you sound like that. One thing this does do, though, while it tries to get in over here and over here, it abandons the c7 pawn with a check. And listen, in most cases, if you can take a pawn with check and not do any damage to your position, it's probably going to be the best move. All right. King has now been forced to g8. And now there is no material difference between the players. It used to be two points, one point, now it's zero. Dead even. And it used to be that Duda was trailing but had an attack. Now he's not even trailing and he still has the attack. And he plays the move bishop b1. The point of bishop b1 is not to go here because you cannot x-ray through two pawns, but it's to go here. It's a very nice idea, very high level understanding of the game. Uh, in chess, because you want to activate a piece, you don't have to move the piece. You can actually just open the door or the, right? Like that's the way it works. That's how chess works. Like you want your friend to go through the door. Your friend doesn't have to go all the way around the whole thing. Like he could, you could just move, right? So you move. Queen comes into d2, threatens the pawn with a check, and then it would hit the knight. He doesn't even care. Look at this, queen f3. Just straight up queen f3. Why queen f3? Because if he takes with check, king goes here. If you take the knight, four points of material loss, check. And now check. King's stuck. Look at this rook. And boom, knockout. So he's not even worried. Anish at this point, sensing the danger, sensing the doom, sensing the fact that he's going to end up in another Gotham video where he is getting posterized. I feel bad, man. I need Anish to play another Immortal. Like when I made that video, Anish beating Magnus Carlsen. Okay, that was a sick video. Then my Midyarov played the greatest game of all time against Anish. Now we have Duda here. Bishop takes f5. Anish sensing the desperation. Sacrifices the bishop for a check. King h1. And he's like, damn, I can't even take this guy because of what Levy just showed like two months later. No, it wasn't two months. It was like a couple of weeks. Rook c8. Now, if you had the patience to watch 14 minutes of this video and not click off because of my stupid jokes or because you were offended at how handsome I am. In this position, young Krzysztof Duda, uncorked, pure violence. Pure violence, all right? Um... You can pause here and try to find it. Forced checkmate in 11 moves. Forced mate in 11 moves. What? Yeah, 11 moves by white, game is over. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little bit. Maybe you wanna pause, maybe not. Here we go. In this position, Jan Krzysztof Duda, the Polish phenom, 
found a violent forced checkmate in 11 moves, beginning with Rook G7 check. That is a full sacrifice of a Rook. It baits the Black King forward. And then F6 check, defended by the Queen and the Rook, and also activating the Bishop on this diagonal. The King has to run, so the King goes out to H6. Now the Knight gives a check. The King is being lured forward because it cannot go backwards whatsoever because of that Bishop in the corner. King comes forward to G5. And now you thought that was good, sacrificing a full Rook. How about a Queen? He sacrifices a full Queen. Knight takes F5, Rook F5. If the King would have come forward to G4, he would have been mated by a pawn. H3 mate down 13 points of material is white, but the black king takes the walk of shame to get mated. So that doesn't happen. The king goes back. Rook E5 check now. Opening up the bishop once again. The king is being forced back. But I got news for you. It's only can, it can only go to F7. So in this position, the only thing that can be done is sacrificing the rook, is then sacrificing the queen, running back to F7. Rook E7 check, king to G8, knight H6 check, king H8, and rook H7 mate. Good lord. Young Krzysztof Duda, take a bow. I've never seen something like that. A forced checkmating combination in 11 moves, which begins with a sacrifice of a rook. A check, a check, and then queen to F5. Good god. JKD getting it done. And he actually never even got a chance to do this because Anish Giri resigned in this position. But I think Anish should have just taken on G4. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, and then allowed H3 mate. But, you know, Anish saw that checkmate was coming and uh, the longest mate possible would have been this one. And uh, it would have been, it would have been uh, crazy. Wow. Aren't you just thankful for chess players sometimes? Like sometimes just absolute brilliancies occur like this. And uh, you just gotta, you just gotta, be, gotta applaud. Hope you enjoyed folks. Wanted to give you a little uh, Thanksgiving special video here. And um, yeah, Black Friday sale on Chessly. Set it a couple of times, free samples. If you don't wanna buy anything, just go check out the free samples. For example, um, you know, some of my like opening recommendations like Traxler counterattack. Is, in, is just fully available there as a sample. So every course has a big sample, a lot of openings, a lot of new courses are coming, middle games, various openings. Very excited for that and uh, big news coming soon. So please go check it out. Uh, link is in the description. Today I am my own video sponsor. And uh, bye, I'm gonna go watch uh, Portugal versus Ghana. Hope you enjoyed, happy Thanksgiving and I'll see you tomorrow, get out of here.